<laughs> Look at that plastic scrap there. Not worth keeping because there's nothing special about it. Red, you'll always be busy dealing with so much rubbish. I guarantee you'll never see anything built like me today, and that's what makes me very special. Take a look at the troublesome truck. I guarantee to you, you'll never see a design like that again. You see, toys like me are rare, hard to find, and highly desirable. Isn't that right, Reg? Thomas Adventures could never be this awesome. Just then, Thomas arrived, pulling something very special. Pip pip! Hi, Diesel! I've got something really special to look at. You want to take a look? No, Thomas. Everything today's rubbish. Oh, come on, Diesel. It's not that bad. I've got this awesome, troublesome truck, which is an Ertl top, combined with a Thomas Adventures base. It's really special. Well, Thomas, hearing that, it sounds like a whole bunch of trouble. Well, Diesel, you're actually right. This troublesome truck does cause a ton of trouble. It swings, it sways, it does everything it can to derail me. Hmm, Thomas, well, that looks like a bunch of trouble to me. No, Diesel, we're not trouble at all. You're the biggest troublemaker on Sonal. Everyone knows that. We're just out to have fun. Come on, Thomas, get away from this boring Diesel. Push, push, shove, shove, Thomas. Push, push, shove, shove, Thomas. <laughs> That's the trouble, those steamies. They never ever know who's really the boss. Isn't that right, Reg? I know some would have thought it's impossible. How could you marry up one of the all-time classic and earliest Thomas toys with the latest fandangled version that you get served up today? You bring the two together, whoosh go, and you get something like that. Well, it is possible. I better put this title up to cover myself legally. Some of the processes in this model making expedition require adult supervision. It's a very easy mod to do. You'll probably learn some things along the way. It'll give you ideas for things you, you may want to change. But this is how you make a totally awesome troublesome truck that looks and moves just like the troublesome trucks you see in the amazing Thomas and Friends movies and TV shows of today. Let's do it. Well, hello, I might have to speak a bit loudly because there's lots of noises coming from next door. I'm going to do a little modification in this video. It's something I hinted about in a previous video, at the end of a previous video. That's an Ertl troublesome truck, probably one of the most awesome looking troublesome trucks about. Uh, I dare say they're getting a little bit tricky to find, and I'm going to take the top of this off here, leave the wheels behind, and try and apply it to a Thomas and Friends Adventures bit of rolling stock. Thomas and Friends Adventures rolling stock, I haven't got much of it because I haven't had too many of the toys come through yet. That's Scrap Monster on the top there, and once I take Scrap Monster away, we get to see the bit of rolling stock for what it is. There's not very much going on there, I can tell you that. Maybe they've got a troublesome truck in development, maybe it's about, but I haven't got one. But I think most people would like to see something like that. Just looking through my Ertl Troublesome Trucks, I notice I've got two different faces. I'm not sure whether there's more than two variations on this. There's one here if its eyes closed, and it's been causing a whole ton of trouble. There's one here if its eyes open, and it's looking like a really mischievous Troublesome Truck. And the strange thing, and as I pointed out in the other video, to have troublesome trucks is actually a fairly hard and difficult thing to have, especially in later years. And I've got up the back here, and I showed these in a previous video, but I found one that I couldn't find before. They're your Tommy ones, then in the early years of Mattel doing the toys, the classic Trackmaster era, there was this sort, and I've only got two of these. Okay, one's turned up from the charity shop, which you haven't seen yet. Hornby, this is the latest version of Hornby, okay, and they look excellent. I think they look very, very nice. Noticing it's the closed eye version and the and the open eye version, very similar to dun 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 that there. Okay, if that makes any sense, the Ertl ones. Uh, the one that I found, and I think it's an important one to look at, is this one here, and it's the earlier version of the Hornby Troublesome Truck, very much based on the Railway Series look of the very old style, the way they used to be done. And it's a lot of the diehards would say that's the way they should look. And then what I should also show is a Buckman one, and I think I think Buckman had three variations. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Troublesome Truck 1, Troublesome Truck 2, and Troublesome Truck 3. But it's quite a stylized uh, face. Very, very, well, caricatured, maybe one way I could say it. It's a very nice looking wagon. And then maybe if I bring that there and bring up the Hornby one. Okay, so the Hornby one's more of a, uh, a more recent version. The Buckman one would be an earlier version. Which one of those would you prefer to have? You know the one I'm swinging towards? I'm actually swinging towards the Hornby one. 
But in saying that, uh, when you look at the Hornby one, they haven't done, well, they've done the detailing down the side, but they haven't painted it up, okay? If you take a look at the Buckman one, look at that, it's beautifully painted there. It actually looks, in a sense, it looks more awesome as a little truck. Maybe the face is a little bit over-exaggerated. That's my only complaint. And because I've been comparing Buckman to Hornby, all that's going to start is a bit of a war in this video. Let's just say it like this. Both companies have got their good points and their bad points. I've got an assortment of tools here, files and things, and things to undo things, and things to drill things. Uh, I don't know what I'll be up against in this video, but I've got things here, and I'll try to keep it as much to hand tools as possible, because of this stuff, you've got a bit more control. So this is our piece of Thomas Adventures gear we're going to pull apart. The first thing I will do is remove these rivets. And I've got a sneaky suspicion they're just plastic rivets because I can scrape into it. So being plastic, I'm going to be very careful drilling this out. I'm going to go very slowly because plastic likes to bite, as you can see. And I'm just going to knock the head of those rivets off. Well, I've drilled out both sides here. And to finish it off, I'm just going to get a drill bit by hand and just take off the head of the rivet. Because it's plastic, it doesn't take very much work at all to remove. Very much the case of take it nice and easy. With the head of the rivets, the plastic rivets removed, hopefully now it's going to pull apart for me. Can I do the magic in front of camera? Am I going to be made look like a fool? No, there we go. It's falling apart. Now it's opened up, we can see what's inside, and what I can see inside is a very typical Mattel design, a pinwheel axle, uh, which goes down in that gap there, and what holds the wheel down in place, a very important piece to this design, is these pegs here, which have got an area there where the axle goes through, which, when it's inverted, keep the wheels in place. From what I can see here, it is a very, very simple design, there's nothing wrong with simple, and what I will now do is pull apart my awesome ertle troublesome truck before i start ripping into this i'm just trying to work out how many pieces are involved in this item here i think the coal piece is separate i think there's a split along there uh and the bottom pieces are different pieces as well i dare say i'll know more once i start opening it up and i only just need to do a bit of screwing here to open the troublesome truck up okay i just got that second screw out and the truck is going to fall apart in front of me here into its components okay i'm starting to <laughs> flashbacks of when i was making mad bomber oh now that's triggered people hasn't it because i did a lot of wheel conversions and i pulled a lot of these things apart okay well there is a pinwheel axle very similar to mattel's design there's the pins or the pegs that come down and hold the axle in place i wonder who made the pinwheel axle first in toy design was it mattel maybe more audience knows i know it's been an intrinsic design value in many, many toys, and that's the top there, and I'm just trying to work out whether that must be a separate bit of detailing, or is it painted? I can't tell now. And I'm trying to get a separation of the detailing on the top there. Maybe it's just a painted piece. It might be one piece. So that's the bottom of my Thomas Adventures bit of rolling stock. Very simple. The only thing missing to keep the wheels down is those pegs that hold it down. There's the top of my Ertle here, my troublesome truck. Am I thinking about direction yet? Is this a one direction item? Because we need the face pointing in the right direction, don't we? Or do we? Okay, well that bit sort of goes in the back there. Wow, it's actually feeling like it might fit. And if I just push it forward, look at that. <sighs> like a clip fit almost. It's quite bizarre. So there you go. That's not too bad at all. Still, the only thing we've got to change is to get those wheels down in the fashion. And maybe just come in and do a little tiny bit of filing, and not much, just in this part here, and maybe the other end there. So when we put the top over, with the wheels now going wonky on me, it's not as tight a fit, but man, it's a pretty close fit indeed. Got it down on the bench now. Just for the time being, I will we'll work the wheels out next, okay? Or maybe next. And what I'm going to come in and do with a nice hand file here is just very carefully and not taking too much off at all is just come in and file this area here and it'll take away the tightness of the top of the troublesome truck fitting over the adventures base just spun it around and doing the other side and it's funny because i did watch the jenny beyond Sodor and i just noticed that everything had a face on it and i'm thinking hang on a second the toys uh, that i see coming out in relation to that well i'm not seeing the faces on things and it's one of these things, you do a little bit of filing and you keep coming in and you see how things fit. It's very much a you know, trial and error type thing. You don't take off too much plastic. Plastic's very hard to return once you've taken it away. 
and I'm trying to feel for what's colliding in there, what's stopping things from going down. What I really want to see is this area here, let's put it to the grey there, marry up with this black here. Okay, so I've got to come down a bit further. I might be fighting the pegs underneath the troublesome truck, the Ertl troublesome truck. Yes, I feel like this, see the way it's pivoting there? I think I've got to remove some of the plastic from this section here and here. Just to take these posts off and to secure things down while I'm filing, I'm just going to use a lump of blue tack there and I can come in and get some filing done without things going maniac on me. I've got a bit of a beefier file now. Once again, I'm going to take my time here. Yes, this sort of plastic uh, can be removed quite easily. And sure, if you've got a linisher and I've got a linisher, you can easily take this over to something like that and you can remove the plastic very fast, but you have to be really careful. I've taken a fair bit of material off this, and I'll come in for another fit up. So I've eliminated the gap here because I've filed down the posts inside the Ertl design there, and I'm just going to clip it over the back here. I think I've still got some more filing to do on the Adventures bottom section. Look at that there, it's fitting nicely now. It's starting to come together, but I know at the moment it's been pulled together because the Ertl section is smaller than the area where it's fitting in there. But man, we are getting extremely close. I don't know if you can see the springiness there. All I need to do is come in and file a little bit more here and here. And again, you need to just be nice and careful here because the plastic's nice and soft and it doesn't take that much to remove too much. So this has been the area here that I've been reducing, removing, uh, pulling back. Uh, you can also use a very sharp knife carefully because what I notice is the files get clogged up. And you can come down, of course, without your fingers in the way, down on the bench, you can come down, you can actually very carefully slice pieces of plastic away. Uh, but you need to be extremely careful. So it comes to our fit-up time again, and I think I have removed just the right amount. Not too much, I haven't overdone it. It's a nice clipping sound like that, and there's actually a couple of revelations that's starting to appear to me. Uh, one very, very curious point is the screw pickup points are the same as where the rivet holes were on the Thomas Adventures design. Now, I'm actually contemplating or thinking about this, adding that base plate here of the Ertl, if I had it the right way around. Oh, should I put that on? Or should I... I Actually, one part of me says get rid of this, this piece here altogether, but then I like the fact we've got the little buffers here. I'm going for the simplistic, you know, stripped-down version that looks like that. Okay, once the wheels are on, I'm sure it's going to look fine. And if you'd end up having a hole up here. Hmm, what should I do? Maybe maybe I should do both. Uh, like I said, that's the plate there. I could get, get this to fit on. I get rid of the Ertl couplers. Hmm, end up with that bit of extra detailing as well. Hmm, tricky decision, isn't it? The more I look at this like this, it looks like a wagon stacked on top of another one. I think it actually looks better. The minimalized version of it looks better like this. I think that looks far better. Maybe to help sell the, my point there, if I actually just put the wheels in, I think that looks how it should look. They're about the only thing missing, we're missing our little buffers, aren't we? Maybe I'll rip them off the other one and just stick them on the front there. I think that's a better look. Yeah, I'm right at that time and I'm trying to work out what looks good and what doesn't look good. It's a nice idea to toy with it, sorry for the pun, uh, and just see how it goes against an engine. You know what, I think that looks pretty good. I reckon that's a winner. And I will give Thomas a bit of a drive here just to see how it looks. We still have to come in and secure the wheels down, which is very important to do. I have got a little idea for that. Hopefully it's a nice simplistic one. And it's quite curious because the planets have lined up a little bit inside here when we put this back together, but this looks far more awesome than that. Come in and disconnect those clip connectors. I actually like those. Oh, nice positive feel there. And we're going to sort out the wheels. So I'll just pull the top off here. Hmm, okay, I do have a plan here. The next little challenge is to keep these pinwheel axles down on the bottom there of this chassis, or whatever it's called. Uh, what was doing the job before was those pegs or posts that were underneath the uh, top of the Thomas Adventures blah blah there. I thought maybe I could lay in some epoxy or aldite in the bottom and I would lock the axles down at the bottom 
and the wheels could still spin independently, but maybe I thought, and this is a bit of a cheeky one, I could lay in some foam, and once this toy gets put together, the foam can hold the axles down. The foam I'm using, it's the same stuff I used in the pull tracks. It's all got skimpy now. It's now thinner than what it used to be. It's the stuff that's down on the floor of my garage here. I'm going to cut off a piece which I did like this. Now, the trick here is, is to get the right depth because I need to go basically from the top of the design in here, go all the way down and make sure that I'm holding those pinwheel axles down. So I've just got to measure off a nice distance and maybe keep it a bit fatter because when I put the toy together, it's going to want to compress together. So with my troublesome truck just snapped together and not screwed together yet, and of course the wheels aren't contained, we are going to put some foam inside here. We're going to get the right distance, so it's going to be from the top there all the way to the bottom here, because I want those axles to be held tight, and maybe a bit more because this foam will compress, and I might cut around here somewhere. You didn't need to see me cut a piece of foam, and I'm just going to show you how it inserts inside there. Okay, it goes right up hard against the posts, or the way the screws come up to the posts. And then I'm going to put the top on, and I want it to be a nice interference fit, because we're going to be squashing this down. I think it's important to be squashed down. Let's see if I can get in the right spot here. Those posts need to be either side. This might be quite troublesome here. Sorry for the pun. But maybe I need to cut the foam down a bit. It's a bit of a trial and error thing. Just trying to get this thing to fit. It is troublesome. That's what you get when you work with troublesome trucks. Well, I'm finding the foam to go up inside there. What I should do is put a slit down the side here of the foam so it coincides with this plastic piece on either side of the earth design. So being very careful here, I'm just going to put a nice little slit here, just to the top bit there that's going to help it fit in, and also the same to the other side. Be careful here if you make a mistake, you're off to the hand and finger surgeon. And it's a matter of then just sliding it in there. Now we've got those cuts made in there. This may find a home a bit nicer. Yes, that's much, much nicer. And then we're going to introduce our wheel section here. And like I said, it's an, I want it to be a nice interference fit. And I'll explain that hopefully soon. I might have to also cut a bit off the foam if it's too much. Oh, that's feeling nice. And let me just feel these wheels. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. They've got nice suspension now. Ooh, that's really funky, actually. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. You can get the rocking action that we see in the Journey Beyond Sodor. Oh, you're going to love that, aren't you? Okay, we are very close to being finished here. Okay, so once again, I'll show you that in there. It's a piece of foam. It's wedged up inside there. You can see where the axles are playing on the bottom of this. Okay, that foam is holding the axles down. This is coming together nice. I'm trying to steer clear of using glue because once you start gluing stuff, it's very hard to reverse things and pull things apart. The way this stands at the moment, I've got it facing this direction. Uh, the funny thing about the Thomas Adventures rolling stock is these little clip connectors don't spin, but they do spin on the engines. And what I noticed, and this is the miracle of this mod, is that if I do that, the, basically the pegs line up exactly with the holes of the Thomas Adventure. So it's like Ertl talks to Thomas Adventures. You can see the screw hole down there. The same happens on the other side. It is, it is a toy miracle that this has happened. It's going to really help me put this together. But I think aesthetically, hopefully I got that word out correctly, I think it looks better with the connector laying flat on this side. And of course, Thomas can connect on like this and strangely they spin on the engine side but whether there's a forward and backwards on the thomas adventures well you can tell me okay in some toy town miracle here i'm going to try and make the planets line up and the screw holes and i'm going to use the Ertl screw uh, down through the thomas adventures design here and i'm going to pick up on the Ertl post which is the top part of the toy and I'm going to carefully screw this in without over tightening. Okay, that's it. With one screw in, you can see that it's wanting to bulge out. That's a nice look because it's holding those wheels down. And I will come along and look at the way that's lined up. Quite amazing. And I'll get that screw into that area there. It has helped that it's magnetized onto the screwdriver there. Once again, I'll just put this in nice and carefully. Yes, I'm just playing with this. That foam is putting a lot of pressure down to the wheels, and I've just got to keep tweaking these screws. Okay, it's one of the. Maybe they need a, a washer underneath there, but I'm just going to try it without a washer. Okay, looking pretty good. Looking very, very nice. It's something that. Oh, okay, that one's just popped out. Yes. 
Oh, okay, I'm going to need a... There you go, there's a problem there. The screw's just basically gone all the way through. I will need to put a washer in here. You need to see the little problems that I've got going on here because they will probably happen to you if you're going to attempt this. So I'll just carefully pull the screw out here and put washers under the heads. Went searching for a very small washer. I couldn't find that, so I thought, well, how? I'll do it the other way and I'll try and find a screw for larger head. Now, this is all the stuff from when I used to muck around the PCs. And from that, I found those there. They've got a bigger head and the thread on them isn't uh, that different to what was before. So like troublesome truck uh, history repeating itself, I'll just get this toy design clamped together and closed up. I was going to cut the foam down a bit, but I actually like the nice positive pressure it's got in, in pushing those two parts apart because it's forcing those axles down. And I'll come in and get these screws of a much bigger head that aren't going to go and sink through the design and just carefully screw these in. And I mean carefully. Of course, do the same to the other side, again, very carefully. And again, it's a matter of just checking how this has come together. Hopefully I've got it around the right way. Well, I know it's the right way because when it's this way round, those posts line up with the screw holes exactly. It's quite amazing, that really nice find. And I'm just going to do the last little bit of tightening here. And we're going to see a very, very special troublesome truck that's got features that none other troublesome trucks got. So I've connected up the troublesome truck to Thomas, give him a bit of a drive here around the back here, see how he feels now, the wheels have been screwed down. Out of the way, Scrap Monster, out of the way, Thomas Adventures Rolling Stock, we've got something far more awesome than that. There is my Erdl Thomas Adventures bit of troublesome truckness, and what's really, really nice is that it can do this. Get out of the way, Thomas, you are nothing but trouble. <laughs> Well, this little toy modification of putting an Erdl with the Thomas Adventures was actually not very hard at all. In fact, it was very easy. And what I've made is a troublesome truck that can do things like this. It can rock on its axles there. The Thomas Adventures rolling stock doesn't do it. It's rock solid because of the way the axles have been pushed down by the design inside that we saw earlier on. You may like this. You may hate it. I can emulate things from the journey beyond Sodor now. And we can give Thomas a bit of a drive here. It looks totally awesome. I think maybe you can have your say on this because I know my audience will say things that they want to say. Out of my way, scrap monster, blah, blah. Out of my way, you piece of rolling stock. And we come through with the most awesome bit of troublesome truck rolling stock you're ever going to see. Now, maybe people won't come in and do this mod. It is a little bit of work. You know, most people won't have access to a beautiful Erdl uh, troublesome truck. And it is the most awesome one, I think. What this is sort of similar to is what Mattel were making back with the early take-alongs. It was the rocking one, which had a face, and it was all metal. It was a very, very nice thing, but I've only got one of these. Okay, and I think, I thought to myself, well, why don't we keep seeing awesome stuff like this? There seemed to be a passion for making stuff that, well, just didn't have the Thomas and Friends vibe that we like to see. And really, the question is, why doesn't Mattel take the effort and make something that looks like this? I like the way this plays, because... Look at the way the suspension now works on that toy. For the fact we're using foam in there to hold the axles down, it's actually a pretty good thing. But because the underneath there has a gap, the wheels have got somewhere to sink into as well. Okay, so it was probably a nice thing to leave that base plate off. I like this a lot. You know, you tell me what you think about this and the way it's totally different to what we've seen before. I know normally if you're taking players in Thomas Adventures, you drive your trains around like that, the rolling stock just surrenders and comes along behind. But now that Troubles and Trucks been made awesome, it's in control of Thomas, and it always has been, and Thomas knows that. Hey, watch out, Thomas. We are now so much fun to play with, and we have control of you. We always have done, but you never know that. We push and shove and turn you in all sorts of directions, and now we really rule the railways. <laughs> Oh yes, you can go crazy changing things around to the way you want them to be. Let me just carefully disconnect Thomas there. What I may show you next, I've actually worked out a really, really awesome uh, method to make a troublesome truck face, which doesn't give you too much pain and it doesn't cost too much and you make it out of plastic. And what I've done is I've got one in there and I'll just get it out here. Okay, there it is there. I haven't painted it up yet. There's a bit of a process that I had to learn to do this. Okay, and best of all, it's a very inexpensive way to mould things. So maybe if you're lucky, and if, I'm, if you're good to me, 
I'll show you how to make a troublesome truck face so you can go and slap on the something which hasn't got a face. This little modification really does rely heavily on the early design. It's always nice to go back in time and see the way things used to be done. I'm pretty sure that the bulk of my audience wants to see this return. There were faults with Ertl, but you know, the things that made it nice outweighed the things that made it bad. And I remember when I did Mad Bomber, and I started to convert these toys into HO runners or OO runners, whichever way you want to bend it. Uh, they were always beautiful toys to convert. And there is Mute, which is Devious Diesel in Ertl Designer, just beautiful toy. You pick this up and it's so much metal in the top design here, it looks super fantastic, super devious. And that's when I converted it to HOO. -O. It was such a beautiful toy to convert. You have some really fond memories of making that conversion. He's got a splash of blue on the back because it's a clue to the Mad Bomber without giving anything away. And these are the rolling stock that I converted as well. Diffuse it, I think was the name of those things there, and I turned it into explosives or something like that. You can tell me. Always really nice to convert the HOO rolling stock underneath. And this was a kinder surprise insert on top, just turning it into like an LP tanker. Okay, once again, underneath there is the what would have been something pulled apart from early design. And maybe it would be worthwhile taking a look at this troublesome truck here, which has got the HOO wheels. It was a mad bomber thing as well, been dirty down a bit. And when I looked at this the other day, it gave me the idea of thinking about doing the conversion of Erdl to Thomas Adventures. Can it be done? And hopefully in this video, I've showed you that it can be. But I do ponder and wonder why we lose the detail in our toys. And I'm sure you do as well. Well, I hope you learned stuff in this video. I hope I've made it nice and simple for you to do this. I try to make it as hand tool friendly as possible and keep away from the power tools. And wow, it has been a very long time since I've done one of these styles of videos where I've done the conversion on the Thomas toy. I hope you really enjoyed it. And now that I've compared Buckman with Hornby, it's just going to start a total war in this video about which one's better. Let's not go there, hey? The, the pegs inside... Oh, do another one. Far more awesome than uh, the Thomas and Friends adventure stuff, I can tell you. That's what children really want to play with. I mean, that versus that. Well, there's no comparison, is there? is come in and lay out some araldite along the bottom there that would contain those metal axles and the wheels can still spin uh you know the other thing is oh <coughs> so my troublesome truck back together just uh <coughs> adam away scrap monster poof adam away thomas adventures rolling stock and come through like this and look at this watch this Reds, you'll always be busy dealing with so much rubbish. <coughs> Just then, Thomas arrived and he went over lump. <coughs> peep, peep. Hi, Diesel. I've got something really special to look at. It's really, really nice. Rubbish, Thomas. Rubbish, Thomas. It's all... <coughs> Hi Diesel, I've got something really nice to look at. You want to take a look? No, Thomas. Today everything's rubbish. I'm not interested. <coughs> peep peep. Hi Diesel, I've got something really special to take a look at. You want to blah 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 blah? Hey <coughs> Diesel, we're in trouble. You're the biggest troublemaker on Sodor. We're just out 
have a bunch of fun. We're just out to have some trouble. <laughs> push, push, shove, shove, Thomas. Push, push, shove, shove, Thomas. <laughs> Typical steamy. Never know who's boss. I better squeeze this on up the end here, the trolls will never hear what I say here, by now they would have been screaming at me, but Leo, why would you bother, there's already one of these available. Yes, there is a Thomas Adventures troublesome truck, I have looked high and low for this toy, I can't find it yet in Australia. As I've learned, there are many, many toys that don't land in Australia, I'm given no assistance from the big toy companies, maybe one day they'll appear, maybe it won't. I don't know whether it's die cast, I don't know whether it's plastic, it's very hard to tell from the pictures online. It looks rather similar to some variants that were getting around in the take and play era, although there is a little bit less detailing, in particular the buffer area. In my scouting around I also stumbled across this most amazing looking glow in the dark diesel set. Please go out and buy this. Hey, I wonder where Mattel got the idea for a glow in the dark diesel. Hmm, I wonder. And that's one I'll be looking for. The problem for me buying stuff online is it basically doubles the price because of the shipping to Australia. I'm not going to be that silly to do that. Maybe I would do that with Tommy Toys. It doesn't bother me with that. I just hope this stuff comes to Australia. Please, Mattel Australia, get your act together. Get the stuff into the stores. It is so hard to find the really awesome stuff. And I tell you what, I'm someone who knows this because huh, I'm in the stores all the time looking for it. Maybe the one change that's going to happen in Australia very soon is going to make my life of finding toys much easier, and that's when Amazon Australia hits. I don't think Amazon Australia plays around with the empty peg syndrome that I see going on all the time in Australian retailers, and it's really across the board. I've been looking at this for years now, and I'm very accustomed to watching empty pegs in toy stores. I'll be honest with you, I'm not a very smart person. I never went through university. I never studied retail at that high level. But there's one thing that I know, and I'm pretty sure you know this as well. You don't make any money from an empty peg in a store. I try to teach my audience things. Lots of my audience teach me things because they send me messages and they lay comments into what they see going on in their country. I think the lesson I learned with Thomas of French Stock is if you see something that's nice, don't look at it on the shelves, go and buy it, okay? Don't think you're going to come back and get it on special because it doesn't happen like that. If I'm seeing empty pegs, one thing that's saying to me, this stuff sells because there is a time when the pegs are full, okay? So this is an extremely popular toy which seems to have some sort of weird choke when it comes to supply under the shelves. Mind you, Mattel were toying with the idea, sorry for the pun, of being a direct-to-consumer uh, relationship that was talked about with the Thomas Wooden Railway it's up on websites it's historically it's there to read whether that's progressed any further in the USA I'm not sure because I don't live in the USA but I tell you what from what everyone's saying to me and Beanmeister22 said this to me many years back he said Leo Amazon is the place to go and find all the stuff you want all the stuff that you can't find in those retail stores that just frustrates you can be found easily on Amazon and like I said before I cannot wait for this to appear in Australia, it is very, very soon.